I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello, and welcome to Rama Praise. This is going to be a great time today because I got something that I think that people need to hear, and yes. it talks about are you spiritually or carnally minded? Everybody says, oh, well, hey, no, I'm spiritual minded. <laughs> well, you know what? The Apostle Paul said the Corinthian church was carnal, and yet they had all the gifts of the Spirit in operation. That's true. What does it really mean to be carnally, mind, carnally minded? It means that you respond more in the natural than you do in the spiritual. The things of God does not come to us through our natural senses. Yes. They come through the spirit or the man on the inside, the spirit of man. Paul said that we're spirit, soul, and body. A spirit, our mind, and our emotions is our soul. Is our, is our, is our, is our soul. <laughs> soul. Yes. And, of course, our body. Yes. You know, when your mind thinks of things more from the world side, that means you haven't done what Paul said in Romans 12, renew your mind. That's right. We have to renew our mind with the Word of God so that we can have the spiritual understanding yes. to respond to things the way God's Word tells us to respond. So let's go right now where I'm talking about, are you spiritually or carnally minded? I'm going to talk to you about something and just stay with me because at first you're not, you're going to say, wait a minute, but are you carnal or spiritually minded? Romans 8, 1 through 8, before you answer that, you better hear the, hear the message. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on fussy things, but those to live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, did you know you can't have what you don't believe? You can't get something unless you seek it, and you can't have it unless you want it. If you don't want to be spiritual, you never will. I didn't say you wouldn't be saved. No. If you don't want to go any further in God, you never will. God will let you follow the flock, eat the same thing, drink the same from the same well, but you have to want more to get more. You can come to church and hear what others feel, feel what others feel, but never get what others get. Now I got, I got your attention now. <laughs> because you receive it in the flesh rather than receiving it by the Spirit. If all you ever eat and feast on is car carnality, then that is all you'll ever be, is a carnal Christian. But if you're hungry, and down Texas where I come from, you can be hungry, or you can be hungry. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hungry, well, you could just use some food. If you're hungry, man, <laughs> you're about to pass out. <laughs> you know? 
I think that's the way it is with some people with uh, the, having the mind of Christ. <laughs> you know, if you're hungry and thirsty for the things of God, then you'll get the things of God. To get anything from the Spirit, you have to get in prayer. Now, the carnal mind has a problem with that. Well, it's because it wants to reject anything that's spiritual. Carnality means that you make decisions in the flesh and that you never inquire of the Spirit. Carnality means you operate on how it looks, how it feels, and what you heard somebody say. Did you know that you can dance all over the church, speak in tongues, and still be a carnal person? All you got to do is read Corinthians. Paul told the church at Corinth that they had all of the gifts in operation, but he called them carnal and gave them instructions on how to be spiritual. Come on now. Don't look at me like that. It's the truth. Study the book. Study it. Let me say this. As a, a, if you have a carnal mindset, you respond to everything more in the flesh or the natural, we could say, than you do in the, in the spirit. You know, what comes from God and the things of God doesn't come through the natural senses. It comes through the Spirit. Hello, you there? Okay. When you operate in your carnal senses, you'll just stay where you're at. Sometimes you'll, you might even regress. What God, the things of God and what God sends to you doesn't come through normal senses. It comes through his spirit. Boy, y'all are awful quiet tonight. <laughs> because this is sort of a different subject, but it's something that we need to think about. If the Corinthian church could be called carnal, then we need to check up on ourselves. Because they had all kinds of the spirit and everything operating in their lives, in their church. You see, a lot of times, people, Christians even, go more with how they feel in the flesh than the spirit. I don't feel good. I. I just don't feel right about it. Well, what's that got to do with it? Have you gone and prayed and read the word? And what does the spirit, what is the spirit saying to you? I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I don't know. I just don't feel right about that. Well, is that coming from your spirit or is it coming from your head? Come on now. Many times when people say they don't feel right about something, it's because they're looking at it from head knowledge, carnal, the carnal mind rather than spirit. Especially if it's something that they think they should do or, and, or not do, and that, oh, well, I just don't feel right about that. Oh, it is quiet in here now. For sure. The carnal mind says it's too hard when God asks you to do something. Or when 
the requirements of the Bible require you to do some things. Oh, that's too hard. Another thing, the carnal mind will always come out where I can't. I'm not qualified. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Peter was qualified to be a disciple? Do you think Matthew, one of the most hated people they were, the tax collector, collecting the Rome, the taxes from his own people, his own, because he had sold out to the Romans. Was he qualified? You know, as I read in the Word of God, a lot of the people that God used really weren't qualified, but God qualified them. Because when you get in the spirit, you can see a difference. Now I'll show you. Look at Peter. When they came to the garden to get Jesus, he cut the guy's ear off. He was in, he, he, he going to take care of this in the flesh. Jesus had to put the man's ear back on. Then, once Jesus got on trial, he got afraid and denied him. Now, he'd been, he'd been with Jesus all that time. Come on now. But after the day of Pentecost with the Spirit, you see a different Peter. He's standing out there preaching. Told him, you hung Jesus, but he had a bunch of converts. You see, people remain, they, they may be born again, but they remain carnal in their actions and things that they do because they're not spending enough prime time in prayer and reading the Word. Now, I'm not telling you you got to spend 24 hours a day or, or 16 hours or whatever it is. No. Just spend some quality time reading the Word and in prayer. Did you know quality time is different than quantity time? You know, when I was playing sports, the coach used to say, hey, if you guys will give me quality time, we won't practice as long. But if you're not going to zero in and get into this, it'll be a long practice. Any of you guys ever had that happen? You see... When you live long enough without the word and prayer, your desire for the spiritual things begins to wane. That don't mean you're not born again. You're just not as conscious and not as hungry for spiritual things as you are the natural things. You know, you start to think, well, it's okay. And you become satisfied with where you are rather than desiring to go on. Paul said in Philippians, he said, I don't, I'm just going to paraphrase it, 2023 20, language. I don't count myself to have done anything, but I press on toward the mark. I mean, he could have rested on his laurels because he had accomplished a lot. 
You see, when you are not ingrained with the spiritual mind, then you become satisfied with less than God's best. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. And I don't think I've ever had a crowd be this quiet, but that's all right. I'm walking, I'm walking heavy right now. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to, to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. It says here he's prepared some stuff for us. But you've got to be spiritually minded if you're going to get it. You know, you can't just pick up the Bible and read a couple of verses or read a psalm and say, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says to renew your mind with the word. You don't renew your mind with the word unless you go over and over and over and over. That's why that is, you're told to meditate on the word. Just like you go in the natural, you go over certain things until they become ingrained in you, until they're a part of you in the natural. We need to do the same thing in the spiritual. We go over and over and over the Word of God until it becomes ingrained in our mind. And if we're spiritually minded, when something happens, our immediate reaction is not, oh, what am I going to do? But our immediate reaction and I got this from my father, that's where I learned it. Our immediate reaction is just another chance to prove God's word works. You see, you see what I'm trying to get a hold of here? I, you know, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The reason some of my people get all messed up when they hear somebody using the word but they're, they're cur curving it off where it shouldn't go is because they haven't bothered to study enough to know for themselves. People can get led astray if they're not spiritually minded. Doesn't mean they're not born again just means that they haven't taken the time to become more spiritual-minded about things than they are carnal or natural-minded. You might, people would like it, you'd probably like it better if I say natural mind. That would make you feel better. <laughs> you know how we are today. You got to say, you can say the same thing, but you got to say it a different way. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You don't really know what God wants until you get it from the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now let's read that from the NLT. That's the New King James. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive the truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it for, they, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. I think if some people a little more spiritual minded they wouldn't say well this is what I think the word of God is saying. No they'd understand the spirit said what it wanted to say and that's it. You see, this building started out as a thought.
Then it became a set of plans. Then it became, it was concrete and steel and building material. And then it was a building. That's the way you've got to work with renewing your mind. You've got to start and then it progresses, progresses, progresses just like a building until you reach the point that you are more, I, I didn't say you'd ever get there, but you become more spiritual minded than natural minded or carnal minded. That's what I'm saying, okay? Look at this. If you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you got to do something. Hun, I believe if they will listen to what, how I was and what I was talking as yes. I explained about spiritual and carnal minded, I think it will help them yes. to move to the next level in their lives. That's right. And honey, the offer that we have will help them too yeah, to be more the spiritual. The summer study package. Yes, it's an awesome, oh, awesome it's package. It's really an awesome package. Yes. Uh, three f uh, study courses, Bible faith summer co a study course, uh, Bible healing study course, and the Holy Spirit and His gifts. Uh, These are three over the years. Yes. These have been three of our best sellers. Of course, our best seller is the authority of the yes. believer, but these three come next. And what I like about them is as they have there's there's 20, 22, 24 lessons. Mm -hmm. Each one is a little different. And they got a question near at the end at of the each end. chapter. Now, I don't know how many people have said they've used these in their Bible study, yes. Sunday school classes, small groups, and even some families that the children are a little older, mm -hmm. they have used this as, as a study course. Yes. Each one of these is a study course to help their children understand faith, healing, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. That's right. They, the, there is nothing that will give you the understanding of those three sub Bible subjects than these three books right here. That's right. And then our Faith Food uh, Summer Edition, um, that's a devotional that yes. we used for our family. Right. I encourage you when to use When the kids it. were growing up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then your book, What Comes After Faith. Yeah. Uh, it is based on, and what is the scripture there? there in, in Peter, when it says, add to your faith virtue, uh, all of the different things that it says there, virtue, pi, uh, uh, diligence, diligence, yes, yes, all, all. yes. Peter has several different things he says there. And I, I just go here real quick and then find the scripture. It's right here. Uh, the scripture says now, uh, you know, to add to, add your, to faith. your faith, add yes. to your faith, these things there in first Peter. So you can go find it, read it for yourself. My dad used to say some, he'd say a scripture and the people say, well, what's it saying? He said, you go read it for yourself. <laughs> That's right. That's what my dad used to say. So I guess I can do, you can the, do same. the same yeah, thing. Yeah, because I, I got the same name. All right. Okay. And then my four CDs on prayer, releasing God's power through prayer. That will, this will help you to understand how to pray. Yes. And how that will help you not to be carnally minded. Right. And that is for a gift of $80 or more. That is a bargain. That's a real that bargain. That is, that a, is a real, real bargain. Real bargain. So you can go to rhema.org and um, do that as far as right, right now. Gift. Yeah. Yes. Listen, we've got RBTC fall enrollment. Yes. Uh, you can still apply all the way up to August the 15th. Mm -hmm. You can go to rbtc.org and slash apply. And it gives you all the information about applying and so forth. Or if you don't want to, uh, you're not, you, you, you just want to know more about the school, you can yes. find out uh, all about the school there also if you go to rbtc.org and they'll give you all that information. That's right. Camp meeting. Camp meeting's going to be here. Oh my goodness, it's just about a month away. It's July the 23rd through the 28th, yes. right here on the Rama USA campus, free right. registration. We have also services 
for the youth, uh, services for the children. It's just a wonderful time for all the family to come. Yeah, it, it, you can go to rhema.org and find out all about the camp meeting. Everything's there, but make plans now. Get hotel reservations and make yes. plans to be here. You don't want to miss this, okay? That's right. Well, you, honey, tell us about being a, a Rhema Word Partner. Well, you hear, you hear us say every time we go off of this telecast, thank you for helping us to bring hope, help, and healing to the world. Well, that's because of our word, we call our word partners. What is a partner? Well, it's somebody that prays for us. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need that. Yes. But it's also somebody that sends an offering at yes. least once a month to help us in supporting Rama. Now, whatever you can afford to send. I'm not asking you to go borrow any money. I'm not asking you to give sacrificially. No, not at all. Just whatever you could afford to send each month that helps us to be able to keep Rama going. Also, the Rama Bible College, their tuition only pays for 30% of what it costs each student for us to graduate to a student, them. train yes. a student. But your partnership provides the other money yes. so that we can continue to train more. At worldwide, right now, we have over, over 119,000 graduates yes. in, from 180-something Bible schools in 54 nations. That's what a Word Partner Club member does. You may never see some of these people, but you'll have people that come up and yes. will say thank you because you helped Rama Bible Colleges all over the world. And so that's what it's all about. And so once again, we thank you for helping us to bring hope, help, help and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. This month from Kenneth Hagen Ministries, the Rama Summer Study Package with six powerful faith tools in one package. From Kenneth E. Hagen, the Bible Healing Study Course, the Holy Spirit and His Gifts Study Course, the Bible Faith Study Course, and the Slimline Devotional Faith Food for Summer. Plus, an anointed book by Kenneth W. Hagen, What Comes After Faith. Also, a powerful four CD audio series by Lynette Hagen, releasing God's power through prayer. This entire Rama Summer Study Package can be yours today for a gift of only $80 or more by calling toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.